All the applications in this module can be developed using Microsoft's Visual Studio 2019, which is Microsoft's main development IDE. It's capable of doing a lot, developing, analyzing, debugging, and so on, and comes in three editions. The community edition is fine, and that's the one that's freely available. You can download and install yourselves. If you go onto Bucks anywhere, you can get the Enterprise Edition. But as of now, in the end of December, it's not the right version and will cause problems. So please just stick to your own Community Edition for the moment. It can be used to develop programs in 36 different languages, but obviously we're just developing it in C Sharp. So just one or two things about the installation. When you download it, it'll download the Visual Studio installer. Now I've got that open here, so so if you're just starting to install it, you'll, it'll come to this. Uh, and if you've already installed it, you can still find Visual Studio installer, which you can load. And you can see your edition. It needs to be at least version 16.8.3. And you can modify it, so just check that you have installed the right components. The particular one you want is the, this one here, the .NET Desktop Development. Um, but if we also need the ASP.NET Web Development for the last application, and I've gone in and installed one more, which is the .NET Cross-Platform Development. Those are the three I've, I've got installed. One more thing you need to check is under individual components, um, there is one tick box here. Yes, there, there it is. It's the class designer under code tools. Just make sure that is ticked. And then you can modify your installation. I don't need to do this because I've already done it. But that's what you might have to do in order to make sure you've got all the workloads and the individual components that you need. One of the key concepts of Visual Studio is that it works on a basis of a solution which can contain more than one project. Each project can contain one or more classes. So it has this extra level called a solution. And you'll find that, therefore, you get a folder within a folder when you create a new project. Uh, so when you load Visual Studio, you'll get um, a window come up like this where you can create a new project but we're going to actually do it first of all by cloning a repository. To start off with we need to be in GitHub. I'm assuming most of you have a GitHub account. If you haven't please sign up and get one. Uh, you then need to find my repository um, so you can search for it as BNU dash four five zero four five three forward slash console apps fifteen. I'm sorry there are other versions available but that's the one you need to start with. Should come up with a use this template. So you can click on use this template and then you should have your own GitHub username which should contain enough of your name so I can recognize it or your tutor can recognize it easily. Alternatively you can have something like bnu-0453-your first name. That might be a, as an organization if you want to separate your repositories in different modules. And then you may as well use the same name as I'm using. Now to make my to make this one stand out, I'm going to put the word videos in front of it because I'm going to use this one for the rest of the videos I'm going to record. So I'm going to say this is um, you can put a description in here. This covers app so one to app oh five. Then we'll have to create another repository. You 
I need to add that bit on. Make sure they're public and then just create the repository. That should give you a copy of all my code, my starting code. You can see it has only one project in it inside the solution. If we go inside that project, you can see there is a folder already there for each of the five apps. There's also a folder for your UML diagrams and also any images, screenshots you're going to take. Or you could, if you want, put screenshots inside one of these folders with another folder. It's up to you. What you won't get is a copy of my wiki, so you'll find the wiki is empty. There's a video showing you how to add wiki pages you can look at later. Okay, so we're all set up with a copy of the console apps 15 template, which has all the starting points in, and we're ready now to go back to Visual Studio. So I've just opened Visual Studio, and I'm going to clone the repository. Because Microsoft have purchased GitHub now, uh, GitHub is built in, and instead of having to copy a URL, we can just go, and if you, as long as you're signed in to Visual Studio with the same email address you used for GitHub, you should find you've got your list of your repositories here. I mean, I know mine start with videos. I'm going to put in videos, and that's the one I want. So that's the remote repository. Here's where it's going to put it locally. I don't want to be in my user area, as that is an SSD drive with limited capacity. So I'm going to use my data drive. I've got a box folder and a repos folder. You see it has the same name as the remote repository. So I'm going to clone that. Okay, so we are now in Visual Studio with the repository cloned. If you open up in your Solution Explorer, you will see the folder structure there and we're ready to go. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the solution, right click and build the solution. You should see in the output window the build has been successful and then hopefully the program will run. If I open the program file I should be able to run the program. It opens the terminal window it, there's the one line of output we've got and now we can press any key to close the window. Notice this terminal window doesn't have any facility for saving the output either as a file or as printing it unfortunately so you'll have to take screenshots. You will see in the Solution Explorer we have a program.cs. I double click on it, it'll open in the main editor window. And you can see first thing you need to do is to change my name to your name. And you can update the date as well. So it's a static class. It contains the main method, very similar to Java. In fact, this has come directly from Java. C Sharp was based on a combination of Java and C++. Um, so it works in the same way. We have a static main method, which we can run. You'll notice, unlike Java, we can get foreground and background colours in our console window. We don't have to have a beep. I was just doing that for fun. So I've made a couple of small changes there. I build it again to save. Now the thing that's different about this version of Visual Studio, which has only come out in the past week or two, is it has a Git menu. It's built in. And if it's not already open, notice I've got a git changes window here. 
and you'll just have picked up the fact that I have already made changes to the program class. If I double click on it, it'll show you what changes have been made. Okay, so Git is built in. If you can't see this Git changes, you can go to view and open the Git changes window. Okay, so I've made a couple of changes here. So I'm entering a message to say I've added my name. Oh, I haven't. I've actually removed my name. But you'll be adding your name. Um, and removed the beep. So here's where I can commit all. But I think it's easier just to commit all and push, providing when you push up, you are pushing up something that works. Don't push up something that doesn't work. You can commit things if you haven't quite finished and it doesn't work yet, but then commit and push when it does work. So I'm committing all and pushing. OK, and then we can go and check whether that has done the job by going into GitHub. And you can see that it has updated the copy, the main master copy in GitHub.